Brett Kavanaugh has been hired to teach for George Mason University, and predictably, the students want to stop him. Next on Campus Roundup. Hello, I'm Dr. Duke, and this is the Campus Roundup at the College Fix. This week, we're looking at Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh and the never-ending siege still being brought against him by students and faculty at George Mason University. To talk more about this, we welcome Zachary Petrizzo, a student at George Mason University and a reporter for the College Fix. Zach, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You've, you wrote a series of three really interesting articles about the kind of pressure Brett Kavanaugh is facing at George Mason. Please explain that your stories overall. Absolutely. So the university um, has decided to hire at the at their law school here in Arlington, Virginia, has decided to hire Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. And uh, through, through his hiring, um, there have been a group of students uh, that have now formed uh, rather recently that have decided to protest um, quite feverishly um, and call for uh, the justices firing at the university immediately. And also they want an apology. Uh, for all the students and all the quote-unquote survivors at the university as well. Uh, so there's clearly pressure against the university, but the university is not backing down and caving to their demands. Now, George Mason has a reputation of being a, a less liberal than a lot of universities across the country. Do you attribute some of this to the fact that they haven't backed down yet? Well, I, I think George Mason, you know, while it does have a conservative bend at the law school, we actually see you know, on the main campus, they're actually being a more liberal bend, surprisingly. Um, but I do believe it's the commitment that these, uh, you know, that rector Tom Davis, former congressman, um, and President Cabrera have to this idea of faculty governance that is really keeping, um, you know, these protesters at bay. What was it like to research this story on your own campus? Uh, did you get any blowback? Did, did you, were you able to get a comment or two from the university, interact with them back and forth? How did that work for you? Yeah, no, the, the College Fix, you know, has this really keen, um, you know, a, a adapt um, nature to having a really detailed story um, that's really, um, you know, researched well um, and put together well. And I credit that to, you know, the fantastic veteran editors at the College Fix that help, you know, guide us junior reporters, if you will. Um, but, you know, I was surprised that, you know, going through the process, you know, I, I received many comments from the university and from spokespeople. Um, and I even had a sit down interview with Mason for survivors. Um, so, so we had a lot of comments there. I was surprised the most blowback I've actually gotten uh, was from the Washington Post. Um, they called uh, the College Fixes reporting. They, they, they quote unquote said that we had pounced on the story. So I guess if reporting factually is pouncing, I guess I pounced on it. Well, you've seen across the country pouncing. Every time a Republican or a conservative group exposes any story, it's pouncing now. So consider yourself lucky to be welcomed into that fraternity. And I agree with you. If J schools all across the country prepared their kids as well as the college fix does, we would really have no media crisis in this country anymore. But you go back to the story. Um, what are the, how do we get to a point where uh, you're listening to these students protest, right? And it's always like, you know, I have a friend, first of all, the law students. These are potentially future law students who don't seem to realize that what they're calling for is an end to due process. Brett Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh had his hearing. He was found for a variety of reasons that he, there's nothing that could have been proven after 30 years between the complaint and the discussion of it. And yet you've got law school now, students now who are basically seeming to suggest we who are going to enter the profession of law don't want due process anymore. How's that going to work out for them in the long run? It's 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 a super dangerous uh, dangerous kind of you know area to tread. You know I forewarn the students, and while most of these students are undergraduates that are calling for his firing, I think their pervasive nature um, in in contacting professors. You know there's a professor of economics um, that you know we haven't quite reported on yet, but a professor of economics at George Mason University that was contacted that you know to sign a petition to fire Justice Kavanaugh. So their means are very very pervasive, and they're very demanding. Um, but I think it's extremely dangerous for any type of law professor to limit that of, you know, free speech or free dialogue from this from Justice Kavanaugh or try to put restraints on him um, of any type. I, you know, what I've always said is I welcome, you know, Justice Kagan, um, you know, the famous RBG. Um, I think any Supreme Court justice brings this inherent value um, to the university to make dialogue richer um, and to make, you know, a community of learners really be what a university is supposed to be a net bot, not coloring books and crying closets, right? Um, but about dialogue. 
Yeah, and it seems to me that by having a Supreme Court justice of the legal stature of somebody like Brett Kavanaugh, this will be a great teaching opportunity for the university to perhaps sit down some of these undergraduates, again, some of whom may be law students in the future, to sit them down and say, look, this is the way the law works, and people are innocent until they're proven guilty. And, and we are a culture where, the thing that blows me away about this, Zach, is that you think about the universities that bring uh, uh, progressive speakers to campus who have criminal records. Think about Angela Davis, right, who was an actual terrorist, who's welcome to speak on campuses all across the country. Uh, and the, the immediate forgiveness, we are, that we're not going to hold her accountable for her, her, her very uh, suspicious past, her legally problematic past. But Brett Kavanaugh, who's actually not been convicted of anything, he has not really, there's nothing has been proved against him. We can't have him speak. Can you talk a little bit about that double standard on campus? Yeah, absolutely. There's a, there's a double standard on college campuses across the country, the way in which conservatives are treated um, and the way in which, you know, on the college fix, for example, there's a fantastic story about a student, uh, you know, watching Ben Shapiro and getting an incident bias report against them. I mean, conservatives are clearly, you know, being, you know, kind of isolated on campus, kind of being being pushed aside um, unfairly on campus. And I, and I do think that's prevalent. But I think the one thing that's really nice about George Mason is, is this, you know, professors are quite open to multiple ideas, are quite open to concepts, open to conservative students and open to that way of thinking. And I really credit that um, to the administration that's worked so hard, such as President Cabrera, former Congressman Tom Davis, these, these people that have really made a, put a premium on, um, you know, on, on intellectual arguments that are up to muster, right, um, and aren't willing to cut down people just because they politically disagree or the political wins aren't necessarily in their favor. Zach Patrizzo, it really is great talking to you today. Really appreciate the work that you've done. Thanks for your time today, and we'll hopefully see you again soon. Okay, now time to shift our focus to Talking Campus, our weekly discussion with members of the College Fix editorial team. Today I'm joined by College Fix associate editor Greg Piper to talk more about George Mason University students protesting Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Greg, thanks for joining us today. Good to be here. Greg, you know, when you back up from this story, it seems that really what's at stake here at the bottom of all of this is due process. You've done a lot of work with due process. Give us an update about due process in this particular story. So uh, the students here are basically saying that uh, various accusations, uh, seemingly each uh, less credible than the last, are essentially a reason to block somebody from teaching, uh, somebody who's, who's actually not even going to be anywhere near them. Uh, the, these students seem perturbed that uh, someone teaching in England, uh, about 3,600 miles away from the law school, is, uh, is going to be interacting with students who actually want to be in his class. And, and this really goes back to the, the idea, uh, as, uh, as Reasons Robbie Suave has said, that uh, fourth wave feminism believes that anyone who declares their uh, survivor uh, deserves to be believed, not just listened to, not just heard out, not even uh, some kind of additional investigation, but to be believed wholesale and uh, of any evidence that contradicts or undermines uh, their accusations uh, to be explained as a, as a result of trauma, that it's something that, uh, that came about because they were so traumatized by this behavior that they may contradict themselves, that uh, there may be evidence showing that they consented to something uh, you just want to kind of ignore all of that because people have this this mantra of they're a survivor. Uh, there's no reason they're not telling the truth. Uh, they may be saying what they believe is true, but they may not have any evidence for it. And that's really what we should go back to. Yeah, it's kind of noxious, isn't it, in a way, the sense that uh, just labeling yourself a survivor gives you pretty much uh, supra-constitutional authority to not just try to get people arrested or tried for what they may have done, but to block all future speaking engagements and that kind of thing. I, I mentioned this to Zach. You know, we have a situation on these college campuses where left-wing speakers with legally problematic past, I think of people like Angela Davis, who is a convicted terrorist, she's welcome on campus, and, and uh, not, not a, a word is said about it. Her right to speak is defended. She gets to come on campus and be embraced by the left. But a figure like Kavanaugh, uh, who has not been convicted of anything, they want to block. It just seems like so contradictory and hypocritical. Well, well, he is a white male. Uh, he mm -hmm. has to apologize for that, first of all, for his privilege, uh, for being someone who has been part of elite schools, uh, who has, um, has reached top of legal establishment. Normally, that would be very much valued. Um, but in this case, because he's a white male, the students are saying, no, this actually shows your privilege. You you can't even behave toward us in a, in a respectful way because of your background. It's just kind of uh, inbred to you. Uh, and you need to actively work to fight to fight it, to uh, to not speak up, to be quiet, to say, uh, we're going to let these other people speak. I'm a white male. I need to give up my privilege. 
Now, this sounds good to progressive young kids now who get to feel like they're very important. They can block a nomination like this, block a speaking gig. But the Founding Fathers understood pretty wisely, right, that uh, just three or four generations ago, uh, these kinds of, of attitudes were taken by white people to stop African Americans, for instance, from having the same sorts of opportunities. Uh, and it's the Constitution, when we take one step back, that protects both sides, should protect both sides in this story and allow people to be able to move forward with their lives and their careers, especially if they haven't been convicted of anything. You've done a lot of work with due process issues. And at the state level, in places like Massachusetts, the there's push to erode due process even more. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. There's some uh, new legislation offered in Massachusetts, which has had one of the, some of the most stunning uh, violations of campus due process that we've covered. They would essentially punish students even while their investigations are ongoing. Now, oftentimes what happens on campus is that if you're accused of something, you'll be subject to interim measures. Uh, that means that you may be kicked out of your dorm. You may not be able to go to your classes. Uh, you'll probably have a no contact order against the uh, person who's accusing you. But uh, state lawmakers are considering putting a notation on your transcript while you were under investigation that, uh, that essentially says you've been accused and it's going to be used by uh, institutions. Uh, they're considering these young people for jobs, for internships, to essentially throw them out as soon as they see this on the transcript. It's a black mark. Uh, what I've compared it to in the past is uh, the, the movement known as Ban the Box, where uh, especially legal scholars, law professors, activists in general, are trying to push uh, universities to stop asking people if they have a criminal history, because that's an easy way to get rid of them if they're applying to jobs or internships or something like that, simply to say, uh, you have been convicted of something in the past, or even you were investigated or charged with something, even if you weren't convicted. And it's really a similar thing when you talk about putting, uh, putting a notation on a transcript that says someone has been investigated for sexual misconduct. It may, it, it's likely not going to say anything about what the actual charge was, what the accusations were, it could be something as mild as, um, uh, let's say, inappropriate touching or a person who uh, has, has been accused of perhaps hugging somebody without their consent, uh, which uh, our, our uh, former vice president has been often accused of hugging people without their consent. But this would go on a transcript that would uh, they would essentially be hung over someone's head the entire duration of the investigation. It could last for a few months. It could last for more than a year and essentially judge them guilty before the investigation, uh, re regardless of how even stringent the investigation was, has concluded. So radical progressives who are uh, adamantly opposed to Puritanism have brought back the scarlet A, haven't they? The A now not meaning adultery. The scarlet A is accused. You've been accused. Well, we've got Donald Trump from the White House uh, who, who made this provision about free speech, executive order. Uh, even as he's doing that, you see universities and state legislators behaving this way. Do you think the White House, it, they're, they're, uh, what Trump is trying to do. You think it's got any teeth? Were they, are they going to listen to this? Would it help push back against what's going on in places like Massachusetts and at George Mason University? Or is it mostly for show, do you think? It's a, it's a little early to tell that. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of intelligent people have said, we want to see what this uh, looks like once it comes out of the regulatory process. This is an interagency process where all these different agencies uh, that have a role in federal funding are, are going to be drawing up rules to say, uh, what does it mean to actively uh, suppress uh, free expression, to not protect it, um, to, let's say to launch investigations of people based on their speech or simply to not protect them uh, while they're under investigation. Um, I, I think it's useful for uh, student activists to be able to point back to this and say the federal government is paying attention right now. Uh, this was preceded by the Justice Department getting involved in several lawsuits by students uh, against their universities for uh, suppressing their freedom of expression, for, for cabineting it to uh, very small free speech zones on campus, to launching investigations for, um, for basically just general activism. Um, when, it, when it made people feel unsafe or when administrators thought it was going to make them look bad. So you've kind of seen a progression here at the federal level that this is getting more attention at the top. Um, I, I would expect this is going to take so long that we're not going to see immediate responses from it uh, or results from it uh, from, from the top at this point. But you are going to see, I think, a lot of university presidents and faculty and, uh, and other folks who already don't like this administration uh, citing this as a reason to evade it, to say uh, this doesn't need to happen. We already protect free speech. Look at our policies, uh, you know, kind of ignore all the complaints that come up against us. Uh, but they are going to use it constantly uh, as, I would say, a cudgel against the administration to say you are trying to silence us because of our views that you don't like our views. It's amazing that when you think about, it, as you just said, once these uh, these cases, these these people who have been accused, once it gets into the courts outside of the universities, almost always the students win. The university has overstepped their bounds. It shows you how important constitutionally underwritten due process really is. Greg Piper, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for your time. And we will certainly be talking to you again soon.
Well, our founding fathers may be dangerously outmoded on college campuses. They may be having their statues torn down and the buildings named for them reassigned, but we do owe them a tremendous debt of gratitude for coming up with ideas like due process. Uh, it doesn't matter what your race, creed, color, religion is, all of us are protected by due process. It's a shame that American uh, college students don't understand that. It's a commentary on how poorly they're being educated by their own universities. And maybe we need more Justice Kavanaugh's going to universities and explaining to 19-year-old know-it-alls that due process protects them as much as it protects the him. And that's The Final Fix. Be sure to stay up on all the latest news and information from The College Fix by joining us on all of our social media platforms. For the Campus Roundup, I'm Dr. Duke, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you